Hey there, it's Louisa from Feel Good Astrology and I want to share with you my top tips for dealing with the new moon on Sunday the 4th of August 2024. It's a new moon in Leo. So in this video, I'm going to look at all of the things I think are important about new moons, how you can use them, about new moon in Leo, um, about the planetary picture, like what is the new moon in Leo connecting to within the actual new moon chart. I'm also going to be tying it into the Sabian symbol for that particular day. Um, Sabian symbols, um, you, you might have seen a couple of the videos I've done with Linda Hill, who um, is the author of 360 Degrees of Wisdom. It's a, sim a Sabian symbol book. Um, we'll be having a quick look at one of her symbols. So that's really useful. And I'll also be looking at the asteroids, you know, which asteroids are really playing into this particular new moon and how can we use this to our advantage? So lots going on there. <laughs> Let's um, bring up the new moon chart now and have a gander, shall we? Okay, so here's the chart. Now I've set it up for what time is the new moon occurring in my time zone. If you want to check it out in your time zone, I recommend you go to www.timeanddate.com. Um, it's got a sun and moon tab. And if you go down there, you'll see, um, I think there's a selection called moon phases and it will bring up the time of the new moon in your unique area. Obviously, if you're in Australia, it, it would, you'll be sort of ahead of us <laughs> if um if you're like look, looking at this from um uh you know hawaii perspective then you're going to be possibly um actually in the earlier hours or maybe even on the third of august so you know this really does vary according to where you are in the world um but this is the london chart um for 12 13 p.m you'll see that the um new moon is at 12 degrees 34 in the sign of Leo. So if you are a Leo, if you've got your ascendant in Leo, you've got your moon in Leo, um, it's really, really worth checking out how close this new moon is happening to, um, you know, your particular markers there. Um, you know, similarly, if you've, if this is happening on one of your cusps, you know, if one of your cusps is at like 12 degrees Leo, um, it'll be important if you've got any other planets around there, that will also um, really be highlighted by this particular new moon. And new moon energy is like a seed point. You know, it's the birthing of something. It's the birthing of light. It's the return of the light. It's a new journey of light for you. So, you know, as such, I always think the new moon is really important. It's, it's something that we can use to create a conscious effort, a conscious creation. Um, you know, a lot of people use the new moons to birth new ideas, you know, to uh, brainstorm, to meditate, to, to do something new, to set an intention. So I always think these are really, really clearing, you know, these are offering us a space. And I say space quite purposefully because obviously the new moon, it sounds like there's actually a moon there. And, you know, as we're looking up at the sky, it, it may be just a tiny, tiny little slither, you know, a, a complete new moon, you wouldn't see anything at all. It'd just be completely dark. Um, and so it's, it's the, start it's the starting point where the light will come back so you know this is a really important time in in terms of the whole moon cycle um so the new moon in leo then you know the theme of leo um what are some of the key words about leo i always think you know leo is the fifth sign of the zodiac and it's a fire sign so it's warm you know um i always think it's um a harmonic of creativity so it's about um, joy. It's about love. It's about self-expression. If you think about the sun, which rules Leo, it is about the expression. It is absolutely about bringing yourself forwards, you know, to be seen, to shine, to radiate. Um, if you think of Leo as well, if you think of one of the themes like Leo the lion, it's very much about being king of the jungle. You know, so I, I do think this is a time when we might be central. We might be thinking about our own prominence, um, you know, coming forward, you know, it, this is something that we might have pride about. Um, and it might also be something that allows us to excel and to become exceptional at something. <laughs> Speaking of Leo, one of my cats is just joining me and she has this nasty habit of um, walking over <laughs> my um, my sound deck. So I'm a bit worried that she's going to tread on something and ruin this. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't come here. If you're going to come here, come here. Okay. Wow. 
this is Jenny. She's she's a stray who who made her home with us. So it's so funny that I'm talking about the new moon in Leo and this little Jenny has shown up. So yeah, the next thing I would um, say is, you know, where is Leo in your chart? Um, in particular, where is um, 12 degrees Leo in your chart? Now, you know, if if you're looking at this from a whole sign perspective, um, y- you'll see that Leo will just be in one area of your chart, you know. So, for instance, in my in my chart, um, I use a Placidus charting system. Um, my ascendant is actually in the sign of Scorpio. And Leo, you know, I've got Leo in my ninth and my tenth house with my midheaven somewhere in between. And I know that this particular new moon is going to be in my ninth house. So, you know, if you can check where it is in your chart, it's worth checking out which house it's in um, and then understanding what that particular house means. So, you know, we've got these 12 houses first right the way through to the 12th. You know, for instance, if this is happening in your fourth house, you might find that this is giving you an opening to create something warm at home, you know, to to explore how you can feel more peaceful at home, how you can be more important and expressive at home. You know, um, if this is happening in your 12th house, you might find that your intuition is coming on in, in leaps and bounds, you know. So it really sort of expresses itself differently according to where it is in your chart. Um, before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to everyone that supports this channel. Um, there's uh, a growing number of you, which is really, really lovely. But, you know, whether you're, um, you know, um, dropping me a few quid to say thank you or, you know, subscribing, to, you know, as a, 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 like signing up to this channel on YouTube or just sending me messages, you know, all of it really encourages me, all helps. Um, and I love to hear from you as well. So thank you to everyone who supports this whole channel. I love you. (laughs) Um, so the next thing, um, to consider then is some of these placements. So, you know, this new moon, um, so you've identified where it might be in your chart. And if you haven't looked at your chart, and I'm sure you will have done, if you're following me, um, just go to www.astro.com and put in your time, place, and date of birth, and it will bring your chart up so you can find out where it is. But, um, you know, so once you know where it is and you've got a theme, you understand the theme for, you know, this month ahead, um, it's also worth seeing how it's connecting. You know, it's connecting to the North Node in Aries in a lovely, lovely try. Now, you know, the North Node is something to pay attention to. You know, the North Node has been in the sign of Aries for quite some time now. Um, it's it's on its way out into Pisces and by the end of the year, it will be changing sign. But, you know, in the sign of Aries, you know, we are being encouraged, all of us right now, to come into a greater sense of um, independence. You know, we are being encouraged to um, uh, encouraged to stand in our power. You know, I, I really think that's a strong theme of the North Node in Aries. I think that's why it's been so hard. You know, if we think about, sorry, this isn't the new moon anymore. I'm just going back a little bit. But, you know, the previous North Node was in um, the sign of Taurus, um, where we were really being encouraged to be collaborative and and to, to put other people's needs first, you know. And so we were really, really practicing that. And since the North Node has been in Aries, it's been time for us to assess our own needs our own wounds you know to get really clear about where we start and where we end you know I really see that the north node has been about exploring our boundaries you know from the already great skills that we've got about relating to other people so you know we are good at relating to other people we should give ourselves a pat on the back about that actually we're much better than we realize even even though we hear all these awful you know stories on the news about how awful humans are you know i still think humans are great um and so this north node in aries is encouraging you to be yourself and to be resourceful for yourself and so in this trine with the north you know the north node trining you know this new moon in leo how can you be more expressive? How can you be more central as you're practicing being yourself? And by being yourself, that doesn't mean to see, say you have to cut off from people at all, but you can be connected to people and still 
bring your skills forward. I was sent a lovely little um, video to watch by uh, one of my friends. And um, <laughs> I think it was titled something like how to be a millionaire astrologer. <laughs> so I, I clicked on to have a, a look and had a little giggle. But um, one of the things I really liked about it was it, it said something to the effect of when you bring your skills forward, when you use your skills, you're lifted up. And when you don't bring your skills forward, it destroys you. And that's really stuck with me. And, and I've been asking myself for the rest of this month, like, how am I using my skills? Am I bringing myself forward enough? And so this new moon in Leo absolutely epitomizes this, especially in its trine to the North Node, because it is absolutely encouraging every one of us to know where we are strong, to know where our skills are, and to bring us forwards. Like, bring us forwards now, bring yourself forwards, step into your power. Again, I just want to reiterate, just if, you know, if you're a powerful person, that doesn't mean to say that you are uncaring. It doesn't mean to say that you need to step over people. Like I think in, um, I think the media um, and, you know, a lot of the news and stuff that we hear about kind of associates power with being horrible or being unconscious somehow but there's nothing more beautiful and conscious than realizing who you are and what you're here to do so i really think that's a great message for the new moon in leo you know step into your power and don't be afraid to lead you know lead yourself forwards now the next thing um again which really stands strong in this message is this lovely sextile to Mars and Jupiter. So Mars and Jupiter are coming into a conjunction. And if you've listened to my August forecast, you know you, you know that that will be happening in week two. <laughs> um, and it's a pretty big um, energy. Um, you know, you'll feel it coming in and you'll feel it passing out. But, you know, they are already in um, a conjunction, albeit it's applying, you know, it's not a really strong conjunction. But here you've got the energy of Mars, you know, and Mars rules um, Aries, which is obviously where our North Node is at the moment. It also rules Scorpio, or is one of the rulers of Scorpio. So Mars has this very direct energy. You know, it, it is quite strident. It is about taking a chance. It is, well, actually taking a chance is more Jupiter. But, you know, Mars is about thriving, stepping forwards. It's thrusting. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's moving forwards. It's pushing itself. So you've got this kind of cosmic push from Mars to also bring yourself forwards. And Mars is in the sign of Gemini. You know, I would say Mars and Jupiter, neither of them are particularly happy in the sign of Gemini. But Gemini does, you know, really bring out our thinking. It really does um, bring out the ideas of looking at rationality, looking at ideas, looking at a collection of information and sifting through things and, and getting really clear about it. So, you know, you may well find that you are quite good at articulating you know, what's going on for you um, during this time that you can really sort of express yourself to a much greater level. And Jupiter obviously enhances and enlarges and inflames um, and um, I think really activates, it really grows the opportunity and it gives it a lovely sense of warmth and optimism. I think it's great actually because Jupiter is also the ruler of Sagittarius and Pisces. But if you think of the three fire signs, you've got your Leo, you've got your, Mar your your Aries, and you've also got Sagittarius. So you've got two rulers of the other fire signs connecting to this new moon. Again, it just seems really, really warm. <laughs> so I love that, really do. And again, you might want to look at where Mars and Jupiter sit in your birth chart. You know, so what part of their chart is making you look at information, you know, communicate the information, communicate the things, like show interest, be interested in, in the world around you. You know, the sign of Gemini is absolutely fascinated by the world. And so your fascination um, can really come across by you bringing yourself forwards. And the more you bring yourself forwards, the more fascinated you might be to learn more. So it's, it's all really, really helpful. The last thing that I like about this, I like this a lot and I didn't really see it first off. And then um, I kind of saw the chart out the corner of my eye and I was like, oh, what's that? We've got here a yod and you'll see these like green dash lines um, from Neptune to Venus and from Pluto to Venus. Now, these 
green dash lines are equivalent to what's known as a quincunx or an inconjunct according to where you are in the world you know they have different names but they're the same thing they're essentially 150 degree angles so obviously venus would be in an opposition to something here and from here to here is 30 degrees from here to here is 30 degrees you know so it's that 150 degree angle um yeah, and if you were to add up 150 plus 150, you get 300, and then 30 and 30, you get the <laughs> 360. So, yeah, uh, it's a 150-degree angle. Now, these um, aren't really spoken about very much, the quincunxes or in conjuncts, but I've read a couple of books by the ma Magi astrologers, and they really quite like these and, and talk about these in quite fond terms as, as to how they're almost – I don't know. I think they're slightly magical stuff happens with them. They're not oppositions, but they are slightly challenging. They, they send a bit of a pulse of energy. It's not necessarily easy. It's not necessarily hard, but it's different. And, and that's what I've really come to know these quincunxes as they are, they are setting off a different level of energy. Um, you know, they have to be within a really tiny orb, you know, so you don't see them very often, but when you see them, and there's a couple of them pointing at the same planet, then wherever this attention is going, that's almost showing you what can resolve everything in that chart. You know, you know, what is the missing element? What is that thing that could really, really help us understand this planetary energy so much more beautifully? And beautifully is the right word because it's pointing at Venus and Venus is the planet of love, flow, collaboration, communication, good times. She is absolutely about feeling connected feeling trusted you know to me you know, this lovely warm new moon in leo you know which is all about warmth and all about bringing ourselves forward you know you've got venus in in leo um you know at the the point the fulcrum point of a yod you've also got like this warmth from jupiter and mars you've got the lovely connection to the north node i really think this isn't an, an energy for us you know to bring ourselves forward in a loving way. Um, how do you know when you do it? Well, when you bring yourself forward in a loving way, people know you're being loving. You know, it, it is the thing that brings out the best possible outcome. You know, when you're doing things from an ego perspective, when you're doing things from um, a rush perspective or an anger perspective, you never quite get the results you're really wanting. Whereas if you're doing it from a place of love, if you're starting from a place of love rather than a place of judgment, you, the results you'll get will be absolutely very, very different. So I do think this is about love. Now, the 29th degree is is known as being an anoretic degree. It's, it's known as being quite a difficult degree, one where the planetary energy is kind of breaking down a little bit in that particular sign. So Venus and Leo, she's almost done her, her work there. You know, she is about to go into the sign of Virgo where she gets really, really quite busy and really wants to put herself at service. But here in, in Leo, it's almost like saying, you know what? It's okay to let yourself forward. It's okay to be luxurious about yourself, you know, to be the best, to be the finest, to be, I don't know, um, to be the, the warmest, the, you know, I, I think Venus in, in, in Leo is about really enjoying yourself in your body, like absolutely loving being you, like feeling like the cat that got the cream, like really loving being in your body. Now, this is connected to um, Neptune, which, you know, these two, Venus and Neptune, um, are about love. You know, Venus is the personal love, the, the, the love that we feel in our body. Neptune is said to be a higher harmonic of love. So, you know, this is also, I think, about all different parts of love. You know, like, can we love being ourself right now in this moment? And can we see the spiritual benefit of it? Can we see the spiritual um, lifting of that? You know, when we are feeling love and we're feeling magnificent, this could be a moment of absolute inspiration. And then Venus is also sort of energized by Pluto here at zero degrees in the sign of, of Aquarius. You know, Pluto is all about transformation. So I, I really think this is strong 
energy of transformative love that is really taking us to a transcendental place. So, you know, for you, all you meditators out there, for people who are on an absolute spiritual pathway, this could be absolutely fantastic. So again, I really do think this new moon in Leo is about bringing ourselves forward. That said, I've been playing around with Sabian symbols and you might have um, noticed I've done a couple of videos with Linda Hill. I am hoping to do some more in the future. Um, and she's got this amazing website and I've checked it out quite a few times on other shows. Um, on her website, if you go to sabiansymbols.com um, and whatever degree you are interested in examining. And for me, I want to examine 12 degrees 34. Um the Sabian symbols are always rounded up to the next number. So when I went to her site, www.sabiansymbols.com, I clicked on my symbols and then clicked on 12 Leo because her site does the rounding up. And this is the symbol that has been intuited and written about. And I just wanted to quickly explore it. So it's called an old sea captain rocking on the porch of his cottage, which sounds great. It says this symbol shows the need for quiet reflection to look back at past experiences, especially those times that were threatening or exhausting in some way. Take some time for a little solitude and contemplate the overall picture of your life. You may want to read, go over past memories, indeed, write your memoirs. Well, that is a real sort of like Leo thing, isn't it? You know, where you're becoming central to your own storyline. When back into the business of life, you'll be refreshed and have a better idea of how you fit in and what you might want to achieve. S the symbol can sometimes indicate wanting to retire and withdraw from life too much um, so that it interferes with the ability to make a living or feel like contributing to society. So, yeah, there's this retreating energy, um, you know, that you might also want to factor in. So as you're thinking about coming out or connecting into the beautiful new moon in Leo energy, especially with this lovely, um, you know, connection to the North Node and also to Mars and Jupiter and also this amazing yod, I do think this yod is really quite gentle. And I do think it's uh, it's about lovingly examining things. I do also think, you know, the new moon is that like birthing point where you might be resting, you might be planning, you might be um, not taking action, but making it in the head first. So this is quite transcendental. And, you know, I do think you can use that Sabian symbol to light the path in a new way. Also, one other reflection is, you know, it mentioned the past quite a bit in, in, in Linda's Sabian symbol. And, you know, anything that is connected to the North Node, which is about our future and our future direction, is also connected to um, the South Node. Now, uh, the South Node is just here. So, oh, Jenny, the cat's coming back. Um, so, you know, the connection to the South Node is reminding us also to look at what we've already done, what has already come to pass, what has already worked. Stay there, don't. Oh, very nervous. She's walking over my um, <laughs> my keypad. <laughs> Come here. Oh God. <laughs> I think this is why they say don't work with animals, isn't it? Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the new moon in Leo. What I'm going to do now is step into a deeper look and have a look at some of the asteroids that are showing up. Now, you can find these out for yourself. In fact, you can look at the asteroids. I mean, I use www.astro.com. And if you know what asteroids you want to put in your chart, um, in the additional charts, I, I can't remember what the exact name of the section is, you can add in up to 10,000 different asteroids. But when I'm looking at new moon charts, or in fact, somebody's chart in particular, to see what is in a prominent place, then I go to serenu.com. So if you go to www.serenu, S-E-R-E-N-N-U.com, all of these sites I'm mentioning are down below in the description field, by the way. But you go to serenu.com and put in your time, place, and date of the chart's birth, and then you know, as you click enter, it will bring up all the different asteroids. It also brings up centaurs. It also brings up um, Uranian points. It brings up all sorts of different things that you might want to put into a chart. And so at the time of the new moon and full moon, I always put in um, what is aspecting the new moon, 
you know, what's close to the new moon, what's in opposition, what's in a square. Because I think these are the ones that might give us an extra description. So <laughs> the first one that I noticed that's in a really tight square, it's also at 12 degrees, and that is Bacchus. Now, Bacchus is also known as Dionysus or Dionysus, however you pronounce it. Um, and he's the god of drunken behavior and debauchery. You know, um, I think he's been spoken about quite a lot in terms of the um, Olympic Games and the opening ceremonies. Um, I also have seen, um, you know, it's also my understanding that Bacchus is, um, you know, like the patron saint of um, actors as well. You know, it's about putting on a bit of a face. It's a god of madness and drunkenness, ecstasy. It's wild. It's frenzied. Um, very teenage in behavior. You know, um, Bacchus really shows us how we let go, how we forget who we are and put on another face. I think that might be why he's seen as a, as, um, a patron saint of actors, you know, because you're putting on a, a face, you're forgetting who you are and and you're getting into a completely other state, you know, so there is something very, very different about Bacchus. You know, we get this sense of release. We get this sense of um, kind of trying something new out. Now, um, you know, and, and Bacchus is also known, uh, I think I already said the word debauched, but Bacchus is known for trying things that um, almost seem ungodly. Um, but for people who might be, um, uh, you know, for, for people who think that, like traditional religion might be deliberately judgmental or a construct to um, control us, you know, might actually find the Bacchus um, sort of energy quite, quite interesting because it's, it's not about judgment. It's not about any kind of rules or regulations or um, defined ways of being. It is literally about following what is coming up from your wildness um, now, seeing that Bacchus is in a square to the new moon, um, you know, I think in terms of yourself, you, uh, I mean, it depends how you want to get your um, your intuitive um, connection to how you want to bring yourself forwards. But you might find that, you know, like if you think about how you've lost yourself, how you've enjoyed losing yourself, in fact, you might find it useful to examine um, how you feel about losing yourself, how you feel about um, altered states, how you feel about um, sort of drink and celebrations and things like that. You know, they might be part of your life and they might be really helpful in you defining who you are and bringing yourself forwards. You might also find that they um, are things that are associated with elements of shame or embarrassment or stuff from the past when you're a different person. So I don't know how Bacchus is going to reveal himself to you right now. Um, however, you know, you can either use this to bring yourself forwards or you can use this as a reason to bring yourself forwards. You know, like you might be accepting Bacchus or you might be moving forwards in spite of Bacchus, if, if you know what I mean, you know, it, it can be spun both ways. So, you know, Bacchus is, is quite interesting. Now, in terms of, <laughs> you are crazy, um, in terms of um, world events and how this might relate to, um, you know, a new moon phase, you know, I do think people are going to be probably letting off steam quite a bit, given that it's exactly in a square to the new moon. Um, so, you know, just be aware that people are really, oh God, go down. people are really needing to let off steam and you, you may well find that that is what's going on around the time of this, you know, this new moon. Um, so yeah, Bacchus is, is definitely worth having a look at. The next one that is closer, um, to the new moon is Industria. Now, a lot of these named asteroids, um, come from mythical characters, um, and, you know, our stories and things like that. But Industria was really named about in industry. Industria, you know, where it shows up in our chart can describe, you know, how we are moving forwards in our life in quite um, an organized and productive way. You know, um, I realize in my chart, it's in my first house, which is all about personality and understanding the persona. It's also in the sign of Scorpio, and it really sort of matches how I, 
how I work, <laughs> you know, as a coach. Um, and also that I trained as a hypnotherapist as well, which is a very sort of Scorpio theme. Um, so I'm always trying to understand people's personas. But, you know, you might, as as a little aside, want to see where Industria is in your birth chart. And if you do, that's the number 389. But, you know, Industria is saying, you know, what are you diligent about? <laughs> oh, cat hair in my mouth. Um you know, what do you want to be productive about? Where's your work? Where's your career? How are you going to be industrious? So the fact that industria is also very, very close to the new moon, again, is an indication that what you want to bring out in yourself, this is the perfect new moon for that. You know, this is the perfect new moon to remember that what you're good at, what your gifts are, they're here to lift you up. And the more you use them, it's almost like the more life is lifting you up. Then um, the next asteroid um, that is worth commenting on is Psyche. Now she's asteroid number 16. Now Psyche is Greek for soul and you might know the story of Psyche and Eros. Um, <laughs> my cat is coming around again. For uh, this, I, I, you know, I've, I've had another cat attack when I've been doing a reading and again, it, it, you know, my cat came in when I was reading about Leo, so it, it's <laughs> really quite funny with this new moon in Leo that here she is. Um, so Psyche then, you know, the story of Psyche and Eros um, is quite a long one, so I'm not going to talk about it here. And you can read up about it, but Psyche is really talking about what our heart absolutely is pure about, you know, and the trials we go through in life to express our soul, to understand what our soul is crying out for. You know, it really helps us to evolve, to grow in awareness, um, and Psyche has lots of trials. She has all these different things that she has to go through to, um, be worthy in her soul, be worthy for love, et cetera, et cetera. She is really showing us our quest for eternal love. And of course, you know, we really have to love ourselves first. You know, we, we really do need to develop that constancy in ourselves. So I really find it fascinating that Psyche is showing up in opposition to, um, this, this North, sorry, this new moon in Leo, um, which is also in a trine to the North Node. You know, this new moon in Leo asking you to come forwards, I would say it absolutely is underpinned by self-love um, and like the knowledge that you love yourself. Because if you are on your quest for eternal love and you're doing your career because you're on a quest for love and you're hoping that as you do your career, everyone's going to love you and go, oh, there you are that's not really what psyche is about. You know, that's, that, that's not being born, um, from that complete love. It's, it's almost saying that you need to go there here first. You know, you need to be able to love yourself fully because if you're looking for it out here, you're looking in the wrong place. It's actually here. So, um, this is an interesting one with this new moon, you know, it's part of the picture. Um, so you might also at the time of the new moon, put in some kind of intention or desire to know yourself, you know, so you might recognize your gifts are one thing, but can you love yourself even if you didn't have your gifts, you know, where would that self-love be? And so if you can do the, the two at the same time, I think this is part of the magic of this particular new moon. The last um, thing that I want to highlight, and this is the uranium point. Now, uranium points are a completely different, um, <laughs> a, a, a something completely different that I don't really use, but it's easy to do a quick search. And, you know, I do recognize I would like to learn more about uranium points and uranium astrology is fascinating to me. I, I love that. Now, Poseidon has a lot of the themes of Neptune. Um, Poseidon, according to Uranian ast astrologers, is about inspiration and spirituality. Um, it, to me, um, when I read the description of Poseidon, to me, it sounds a lot more elevated than how Neptune might come across in the birth chart. You know, Neptune sometimes can be a little bit, it shows us where we might not, um, work in true consciousness. You know, I, I always think the the planets are on a spectrum and you can see when they're really turned on and when they're really turned off, when you're working against the planet versus when you're working with the planet. Whereas in the description that I got for Poseidon, this was what the meaning that I got from it was that it was about enlightenment, but illumination, like the idea that there is this light shining the light on the situation. It's, it's creating clarity it's, it's lighting up something that has previously been dark. So it is an enlightenment. 
So Poseidon here, interestingly, is close to Bacchus in the sign of Scorpio. Now, if you think Scorpio is quite um, a psychological sign, um, you know, it, it's it's very deep. Um, you know, a lot of our self-sabotage, I think, is is held in the sign of Scorpio. I think, you know, Scorpio is very, very complex. And, you know, at first, you know, when you're looking at Scorpio, it can seem quite dark, but actually most of its wealth, I think, is underneath the surface, uh, uh, quite a way underneath the surface sometimes. And so seeing that Bacchus in Scorpio, you know, is a almost like about hedonism and the madness that can come up when you absolutely let yourself go completely free, like really, really, truly let yourself go free. I think Poseidon is showing us that from the madness, from the wildness, from the frenzy, from the um, extreme um, expression of your ego in that particular moment can come this massive enlightenment. I'm not saying go out and go completely wild unless that's exactly what you want to do. Um, but this to me is, is showing the consciousness of what is learned from our wild, our wildness or our wilderness even. Um, so yeah, I think this is all part of it. And all of these different factors I think are adding up to helping you bring yourself forwards. So <laughs> I really hope that that has been helpful to you in understanding the new moon, its potentials um, for Sunday's new moon. Like I said, it's on the 4th of August, 2024. Check out where it is in your part of the world. But yeah, I think it's strong. I think it's potent. I think it's really, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't quite, I can't quite get it at the moment. Um, but what I'm, I, I, I feel, um, when I'm tuning into this new moon, I just feel like this is a natural, innocent expression of us coming forwards. I just feel like it's a, um, a feeling a sense of relief as I'm tuning into this. So I hope that that is really helpful to you. Now, if you would like to unpack things a little bit more with me in person, then just get in touch. You know, all of my details are below. Um, and you know, if you, if you wanted to work with me, all you need to do is click on a link and invite me to work with you. Simple as that. So anyway, lots and lots of love to you. Have a wonderful new moon, a fantastic August, and I really hope to connect with you real soon. Bye for now.